Why does this shot look like this? It's shot in what's called log. And actually, you know what, hold on one second. Okay, much better. Now let's talk about exactly what log is and why you might want to shoot like this. Log isn't just for campfires. It's also a shooting profile for cameras. Log is short for logarithmic profile, which is a camera color profile which retains more details in the highlights and the shadows. Shooting in a profile like this will give you more options in post to manipulate the image. For instance, when you shoot in a less flat profile like this and you happen to overexpose, when you try to bring the brightness down in post, it doesn't work very well and the image ends up breaking up. But when you shoot in log, the camera retains more information in the highlights and it gives you more wiggle room in post. See? Much better. So how do you expose when you're shooting in log? It can be difficult to tell exactly what the exposure is when the image is this flat, but you have a few options. Whoa, here comes the zebras. Lots of cameras have a tool called zebra stripes, which allow you to see parts of the image that are overexposed. You can set the threshold for when you want the zebra stripes to appear. If you set it to 90 or 95, you can expose the image until you see the stripes appear then stop down just a little bit until they go away. This will ensure that your highlights don't blow out and that you'll have a well-exposed image. Another option is to use an external monitor. With one of these, you can utilize more advanced exposure tools like false color, histogram, and waveform, which are all visual representations of the brightness levels of your image. With these tools, you won't need to rely on eyeballing the exposure of your image. Instead, you can use science. I personally love using false color because it takes the guesswork out of it and it's extremely precise. It shows the entire image in IRE values, which is a visual representation of the brightness value. You can also see the brightness of every specific part of your image, so you can tell exactly how bright the window is, how bright the TV is, and also how bright your subject is. My mom says I'm very bright. A well-exposed subject will fall somewhere around 70 IRE, which is represented by gray. So as I say, if your subject is gray, you are A-OK. -okay. I've been trying to get that going for a while, it hasn't really caught on yet. But if things start to turn yellow, that means they're getting overexposed, and red means they're clipped. Those parts of the image will be blown out, and you won't be able to recover any information from there. It might seem kind of confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature, and it makes exposing logs super easy. So now that you know how to shoot log, you're probably wondering, should I shoot log? And the answer is, it depends. Log does give you more freedom and latitude in post, but it also gives you more attitude in post. And by attitude, I mean you'll have to spend time coloring each shot. So if you need to turn your edit around really quickly, you might want to shoot in a picture profile that looks good right out of camera, like this. But if you're shooting a feature film or a commercial, and you'll have a little bit longer in post, shooting in log will give you the freedom to fix any mistakes and to add a look to your footage. I hope that these tips are helpful. If you have any questions or any other thoughts about shooting in log, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm Dean from B&H, and I'll see you next time.